A blessed day. In this video, we will discuss the principles of high quality assessment. The principles of assessment serve as guidelines to ensure that the test is useful, appropriate, effect effective, and plausible. These principles are crucial to be taken into consideration because assessment is an important aspect of educational process which determines the level of accomplishments of a student. In this topic, we will be discussing the following high quality, uh, assess quality assessment. First, the clarity of learning targets, the appropriateness of assessment methods, the properties of assessment methods, validity, reliability, fairness, positive consequence, practicality and efficiency, and ethics. For the first one, the clarity of uh, learning targets includes uh, knowing what are our uh, main targets, particularly uh, in the cognitive aspect, in the psychomotor aspect, uh, involving skills, competencies, and abilities, uh, the products, outputs, and projects. So when we talk, we are talking about uh, skills, we're re referring to specific activities or tasks that a student can proficiently do. So we're talking about a specific skills. So let's say, for example, communication skills. We're talking about uh, problem-solving skills. Those are specific skills. While whenever we talk about competencies, we're talking about the cluster of skills. Let's say um, in the 21st century skills, the whole competencies that we have there is, are those four Cs. So while we have uh, in the competencies is the collection of uh, these skills. So reading competencies, for example. Um, mathematics competencies and these areas are actually involving uh, several kinds of skills uh, and whenever we talk about abilities we're referring to these uh, related uh, competencies they are made up of related competencies involving the cognitive psychomotor and affective so Effective abilities when we work well with others, for example, cognitive ability when students can do better alone. So those are examples of uh, abilities. Products, outputs, and projects. So these are tangible and concrete evidence of students' abilities. Needed, it is, they are needed to clearly specify the level of workmanship of projects and these are actually uh, the levels of the workmanship of projects or competencies or output if you are expert skilled or novice or beginner for the appropriateness of assessment methods uh, we are talking about the systematic and thorough collection of direct and indirect evidence of student learning at multiple points in time and in various situations using a variety of qualitative and quantitative evaluation methods that are embedded in courses, programs, and overall institutional process. So what we, do we need to remember in appropriateness of assessment method? So whenever we uh, are planning for our assessment, we have to make sure, sure that these are really the uh, way or method in that will provide us evidences in terms of student learning and uh, the student learning are actually our target outcomes for the validity so it is when we say validity something valid is something fair a valid test is the one that measures what it intends to measure. So whenever we talk about validity, validity measures what it intends to measure. So the test should uh, 
be valid, when I say valid, uh, it is actually measuring what is its purpose. So if we are measuring a specific objective, like we want to know if students can define a certain concept, the, uh, a test should is valid if it is measuring uh, the knowledge of the students in terms of defining a concept. If we are asking, for example, if the students can demonstrate a particular skill or performance, then your test should, has, should be something to do with uh, or has something to do with performance in a way that it should show uh, that the students can perform something, that the students can demonstrate something. So imagine giving an examination that your target is demonstrating performance, then you will give the students a paper and pencil test, then uh, somehow it lacks validity. And when we talk about reliability, we're talking about consistency. Something reliable is something that works well and that you can trust. So reliable uh, test is a consistent measure of what it's supposed to measure. So uh, we say that something is reliable or the test is reliable if uh, we will get the same result if, uh, if we will ask the students to take the, the test again or if their answers are consistent if you are asking them something and they they will consistently provide the same answer or ideas it is synonymous to stability and dependability so aside from saying that reliability ha is uh, the test that shows the consistency of the result so we can also say that a test is reliable if it has a stability or if the result can be dependable. So that's why we have the stability and dependability. So look into the figure. So when we say that the test is real valid and reliable, we will see that the target, the bullseye, no, uh, is being uh, targeted here by the arrows that we have. So... Yan, consistent sila because magkakasama. Pare-pareho yung nagiging uh, direction. While valid, kasi uh, diretso siya, tinatarget niya mismo kung ano yung, kung ano mismo yung uh, bullseye natin, kung ano mismo yung objective natin. While well, look at this, reliable but not valid. So tingnan ninyo, pare-pareho nga yung uh, sagot, consistent nga yung result, yung sagot. However, it's not actually the one being measured. So, pwedeng pare-pareho ang result, yung consistent yung knowledge niya, yung ability niya na certain skill, pero hindi siya yung uh, tinatarget natin na ma-achieve ma niya. Or hindi yun yung tinatarget na ma-measure, rather. Okay. So, look at the third figure. It has something to do with neither reliable, reliable nor valid. So, tignan niya yung mga arrows. Siwa, hiwala, ibig sabihin, hindi consistent yung sagot. Tapos, hindi rin tinatarget yung uh, objectives. So, that's actually a picture of what is a valid and reliable test. Next property or principle is the principle of fairness. So, Students need to know exactly what the learning targets are and what method of assessment will be used. So we say that uh, we provide students fa fairness if we are uh, measuring a certain character, uh, we are measuring student skills, abilities, or character, uh, regardless of their characteristics. And here, sabi nga dyan, and students need to know exactly what the learning targets are. That's why we need to give our students the idea kung ano yung expectations natin sa kanila. We are uh, also giving them the idea or knowledge on how they will be evaluated and giving them the idea on what are the objectives of the lesson. That's why everything should be transparent with our students. So 
sometimes student, you will hear students asking, ma'am, ano pong type of test? So, do, do we need to tell them ano type of test? I think yes, because they need to know uh, the method of assessment that will be used to them. Are they going to have paper and pencil tests? Are they going to have performance tests? Then, at least they need to know no, what method of assessment will be used for them to be assessed on their learning uh, achievements. So, in fairness, it provides opportunity to learn. So, once students feel that the test or the assessment is fair for them, then they will find the assessment as an opportunity for them to learn. So, when we say assessment has fairness, when it is free from teacher stereotyping. So, sabi nga kanina, sabi ko, na-mention ko kanina, regardless of students' characteristics, ano ba yung mga characteristics? Uh, regardless of age, regardless of uh, sex, gen uh, gender, race, yan, yan yung mga characteristics. So, we do not stereotype students. No, that's why hindi hindi natin 'yon masyadong uh, ah ganito yung characteristics ng estudyante, ganitong ta class and test ang ibibigay ko sa kanya. So hindi basta feed uh, may freedom siya for stereotyping. So an other we can say that a test has fairness if we avoid bias, no? Pag hindi bias yung test natin. Okay. A test has positive consequence if it provides positive feedback. It improves motivation and self-esteem. And it gives the students tools to assess themselves and understand how to improve. Oh, let me go back. Okay. So, kailangan daw yung test may positive consequence. Ito yung nagiging positive siya towards students, no? May yung feedback natin, positive, hindi degrading. So, hindi wag mo sabihin... Ba't makanyan nga mo? Bakit ganyan lang yung kaya mong gawin? So, hindi ganun. Hindi degrading. It should give positive feedback. You can tell them what what are the things that they have done and what are the things that they still need to do. No? Dapat positive. Then, kailangan daw nakaka-motivate pa yung test mo kaysa dun sa... There are, wait, there are times kasi test gives anxiety. No? among students. So, dapat hindi ganun yung maging impact ng assessment towards the students. Then, it gives the students to, uh, the tools to assess uh, themselves and understand how to improve. So, ayan, uh, yun nga, sabi yung positive feedback. Dapat yung pinibigay natin sa kanila yung uh, ways on how they will know how to improve their performance. So, another is practicality and uh, efficiency. Something practical is something effective in real situations. And tests can be satisfactorily used by teachers and researchers without a due expenditure of time, money, and effort. So, pag sinabi natin practical, di ba, we're talking about uh, something that we spend. So, hindi lang pera naman ang ini-spend natin. We also spend time and effort. So, time in making it time in administering, time in answering the test. So, in effort, kung effort kung uh, effort ng paggawa at effort ng pag-perform. So, we consider that. So, then also money. Siyempre, as much as possible, we consider yung uh, exp expenses ng sudyante whenever they take the examination or assessment in general. Practicality is equated to usability. So, practical kapag usable. No? So, so there, are the, there are these factors that determine to, uh, practicality. Ease of administration, ease of scoring, ease of interpretation and application, low cost, proper mechanical makeup. So, Ease of administration, dapat test instructions must be precise and complete. No? In, in terms of scoring, uh, 
the construction of the test objective answer key are adequately prepared, scoring directions are fully understood. Dapat alam din. Malaking bagay din kapag nilalagay natin sa point system kung ilang uh, sa test, kung ilang points ang nare-receive nila per item. Okay. So, example, sa mathematics, important yun. Sa Filipino, in uh, whenever we ask students to write an essay, for example, so, ayan, you need to give them uh, points kung ilan yung uh, ibibigay mo for that certain test. Number, uh, yung ease of interpretation and application, dapat easy to interpret and apply if fast if tables are presented. Low cost, dapat low cost yung materials na ginagamit. Baka may test ka na 1 to 50, tapos ang papabayad mo sa estudyante, 20 pesos kasi 20 pages yung test mo. Hindi na yun practical. Then, proper mechanical makeup. Printed clearly in an appropriate size for the grade or year level, the test is intended to be given. Tignan ninyo yung mga examinations sa grade 1, kinder, mga pre-LM and uh, yung uh, beginning years, no? grade 1, grade 2, grade 3. Di ba malalaki yung mga uh, prints ng mga test na yan? Kasi nga, depende yun sa grade level. So, habang tumataas yung grade level natin, kumiliit yung mga sizes ng mga font, for example. Okay, yan yung sa practicality and efficiency. By the way, when we, whenever we talk about efficiency, we're talking about the quality of the, te uh, the test that we are giving. And lastly here, we're talking about ethics. Whenever we talk about ethics, we're talking about morality and assessment. So, it refers to, quest to question of right and wrong, what is right and what is wrong. Degree of secrecy of grades of the learners. Ito importante. Ito dapat yung mga grades na mga studyante confidential. It's just between you and the teacher. So, ina-avoid din natin dito na ma-bully yung other students, particularly kung hindi nagpe-perform ng maayos yung mga studyante. Then, uh, we also have yung issue kapag may kinocompare yung grades nila, iniiwasan din natin yun. Na yung degree of secrecy ng grades. No? Unless na given consent na pwedeng makita yung grade ng isang estudyante. Okay. Test result must be confidential to avoid slow learners from embarrassment tulad ng nabanggit ko kanina. Kaya nandiyan yung confidentiality. Okay. So, ayan. Uh, I think that's all for the principles of assessment. I hope uh, you understood well what is meant by uh, the principles of high quality assessment and what are the principles uh, in this high quality assessment. So that's all for this segment and I'll be seeing you for our next chapter or next lesson. Thank you.